oh wow look at us today we've got some ambient lighting it's super dark outside because it's about to pour with rain so we're gonna have my fairy lights on to try and brighten up the place because it's like nighttime <laughs> it looks literally like nighttime outside so i needed to film this morning we're gonna have to work with what we've got so we have some lights yay and yes i am wearing my harry styles jumper one do you found in the house i'm a stan but anyway hi guys it's izzy and in today's video i'm going to be doing another if you like this try this book recommendation video i think people really liked my last one i really liked making it and yeah i thought i've read quite a few more books since then got some few other recommendations so well, let's make another one. Basically how this video works is I recommend a book based off another book so if you like that original book then you may like the other book I recommend. I'm going to be recommending these books for different reasons. Some of them have similar themes, similar characters, similar plot lines, similar world building etc etc and yeah I hope you enjoy this. Let's get started. So the first two books I'm going to be talking about are if you liked Educated by Tara Westover, then I think you might like The Glass Castle by Jeanette Walls. These are both autobiographies and non-fiction autobiographies. Educated has been really popular for the last year. I only read it like this month and I loved it. <laughs> Spoiler alert for my wrap up. But I thought it was wonderful. I don't rate autobiographies because I feel too bad rating people's lives so but I loved it and I read The Glass Castle many a year ago three or four years ago now but from what I remember they are extremely similar and I loved both of them so basically Educated is written by Tara Westover and it follows her as she grows up in an extremely Mormon family and she is not educated, she doesn't go to school, she is homeschooled and even that's very loose. She has a big family and her dad is very intense and thinks like the end of the world is coming. She stopped from doing a lot of things because they're not like proper in their religion and she then goes on to extremely hard to get into schools like, like Harvard and Cambridge despite having such a difficult upbringing and it's fabulous. I would highly recommend it. Even if you're not a massive fan of non-fiction, I would still really recommend it. It still kind of reads like a story and it's definitely not heavy in terms of reading. It is heavy in terms of subject matter, but in terms of reading it's like reads well as a story and I'll leave the trigger warnings down below because there are quite a few, but The Glass Castle also follows our main character Jeanette because you know she wrote the book and she also has a very difficult upbringing where she doesn't really go to school and her family moved around a lot when she was younger they sort of lived in the wilderness and sort of were not very focused on their children or what they needed to survive they the four of them her and her three siblings sort of had to fend for themselves and bring themselves up because their parents didn't really do a great job of that so it follows very similar stories in the fact that they both had very difficult upbringings where they weren't really cared for in the way that they needed to be but still went on to achieve great things and live very successful lives but also still had to manage those family relationships even in their adult life and the difficulty of that are themes that are explored greatly in both of those books. So yeah, if you've recently read Educated by Tara Westover and are looking for something similar, I would highly recommend The Glass Castle. It is a really great book and definitely the whole time I was reading Educated, I was just thinking about The Glass Castle because it really reminded me of it so much. So yeah, I mean, I would recommend them both. So if you haven't read either, read them. The next books I have to talk about are I know I I know I recommended a book for Harry Potter in my last video but I've got another one so if you like Harry Potter by JK Rowling then I think you will like Keeper of the Lost Cities by Shannon Messenger these are both great books obviously Harry Potter is just you know in a league of its own and obviously Keeper of the Lost Cities is not on the same level nothing could ever be on the same level as Harry Potter 
but I do think it's a fantastic book. So, I mean, you probably have read Harry Potter, so don't really need to explain what that's about. But Keeper of the Lost Cities follows our main character, Sophie, as she discovers that she is an elf and she has to enter the elf world and leave her human family behind. And as she does that, she realises that she is quite a lot more special than the elves realised and she has powers and secrets that they did not anticipate and neither did Sophie and it becomes quite dangerous towards the end as they realise everything she could be hiding. So this is a great book, I love it and the reason I'm comparing it to Harry Potter, one because there's a magical school which was 10 out of 10 would highly recommend. Yes, Sophie attends this elven school where they learn magic and she meets a lot of new friends and she discovers her powers and has teachers that are tricky and also wonderful and the the school part of the book is excellent but we do get a lot of the school in this book so if you're a big fan of magical schools I highly recommend this book but also just in terms of Harry Potter I think something it does very similarly and just as well is the relationship dynamic between Sophie and her new friends and also her adoptive parents basically because Sophie has to leave her human family behind. She is placed with two characters, Grady and Edeline, and they are her guardians. And basically their relationship literally warms my heart. It's it's so good. I love it so much. It's like the best thing. I love it. And yeah, just basically Sophie's relationship with her friends and her family and her new family and are all done so well. I absolutely love all the dynamics and I really like how different parts are focused on throughout the book and I think it's done really well and I really love it and yeah it's another great sort of middle grade. I would say basically Sophie is 12 in this book but there's like eight books I think and I think she ages a little bit through every book so similar to Harry Potter in the fact Ooh, that's the wrong way around in the fact that we start off with Harry at 11 but we end with Harry at how old is he like 16 17 I don't know older so I think this is a similar book in that it matures with each book and yeah great love them both read them <laughs> I did use Illuminate in my past video, but I've read another book that I think is very similar. So if you loved Illuminate by Jay Kristoff and Amy Kaufman, I think you'll really like Sleeping Giants by Sylvan Nouvelle. I think that's how you say it. These are both good books. I think I actually preferred Sleeping Giants a bit. I'm not sure. They both have strengths and weaknesses, but Basically, Illuminae follows our main character, Katie, and at the start of the book, we are shown Katie as her home planet is being destroyed and taken over by Baytech Industries. Basically, her planet is being blown up and they are all trying to escape, and she manages to get on one of the very few ships that got off the planet, but then they are being pursued by Baytech Industries, across space on a spaceship there's crazy AIs and plagues and it's wild it's a good time I don't think it's the best book ever but I really like the plot and the pacing and Illuminate is told in mixed multimedia so there are interviews text chats voice recordings like walkie talkie things diagrams maps there's everything so it's a very speedy read because you're just like changing format and there's pictures and all kinds of stuff and Sleeping Giants is a book about this girl who when she's younger stumbles across a massive blue hand like a giant hand and this then follows her as an adult as she starts her research into this hand and begins to find other pieces of this unknown massive robot thing it's great and it's also told in mixed media formats there's no prose it's just dialogue and again it's sci-fi it does take place on earth but it is quite heavily sci-fi 
and I think they're both really interesting reads because they shift between formats and they're both super engaging reads and they keep you really interested and really involved and I couldn't really put either of them down so they're really both great sci-fi books that are told with different formats than we are used to you know instead of like normal prose and yeah they're fabulous books, I would highly recommend both. Sleeping Giants I think is adult and Illuminate is young adult but I think they were pretty similar in tone. They're both trilogies and I do think that you should skip the last book of Sleeping Giants because it sucked so much. The first two books were fantastic, the third one was terrible so just ignore that one <laughs> but all three of Illuminate were great. Um, so yeah, if you liked one of them, I'm pretty confident you would like the other one, so check them out. The next recommendation I have for you is If You Liked Aristotle and Dante Discover the Secrets of the Universe by Benjamin Aliré Sands, that's a mouthful, then I think you would love Birthday by Meredith Russo. So Aristotle and Dante, if you haven't read it, a lot of people have, but if you haven't, it follows our main character Aristotle as he meets Dante and they become best friends and we sort of look at their relationship as it develops. I think they meet when they're about 15 and we sort of follow them as they are becoming adults. It focuses a lot on familial relationships. Aristotle's father suffers severely from PTSD from the war and his brother is also in jail but no one will talk about it. They're also all Mexican and we look at sort of Dante and how he doesn't feel Mexican enough. Their friendship does also maybe develop into something more and it's great and the whole book is wonderful. I highly recommend it. I think it's fantastic and if you liked that book, which I think quite a lot of people did, then I think you would love Birthday. I will say the writing is very different because the writing in Aristotle is quite, not so much lyrical, but it's more, you know, it's not like straightforward writing, which I think is more present in Birthday. But Birthday follows our two main characters, Morgan and Eric. They share the same birthday, so this follows them every year from their, I believe their 10th birthday to like their 18th birthday. I'm pretty sure that's like the time frame. And we see how they are getting on at each birthday and how things have changed and how their relationship has changed and how they're feeling about everything. And it's a really cool way to tell a story, I think and Morgan is trans so she was assigned male at birth but she is female and she would really like to transition but there are a lot of trigger warnings trigger warnings for both of them actually um trigger warnings for like homophobia misgendering racism etc suicide attempts death of parents depression there's a lot I'll make sure I list them all down below in case you want to know but I think following both of these best friends as they grow up and how their relationship changes as they you know sort of develop into each stage of their life and I just think they're wonderful books that really chronicle friendship but also love and family and just everything it's so good I love it read them both. I think Birthday is criminally It's so good. It's one of my favourite books of the year. So yes, love them both. Read them. The next books I have to talk about are If You Enjoyed Sadie by Courtney Summers then I think you will enjoy A List of Cages by Robin Rowe. Now Sadie follows our main character Sadie and she is basically trying to track down the man that raped and killed her sister and she is obviously out for revenge and so we follow sort of two timelines we follow Sadie on this investigation and sort of trying to hunt down this man and we follow a reporter who after Sadie has now gone missing too is trying to find out what happened to both Sadie and her sister and we sort of follow him finding out what happened to these girls and A List of Cages follows our main two main characters Adam and Julian they used to be 
foster brothers. Adam's mum took Julian in when his parents died and he stayed with them for a year or two and then his uncle was found and his uncle took Julian home and this follows a few years later as Julian and Adam reconnect and start to become friends again and a lot of stuff happens to Julian. There's massive trigger warnings for both these books, massive trigger warning for like parental abuse. I mean, the uncle isn't his parent, but he's his guardian. So parental abuse or guardian abuse, I guess. But so massive trigger warning for that. So if you're if you're in any way sensitive to that, I would steer clear of this book. And also massive trigger warning for discussion around sexual assault and rape in Sadie there's no graphic scenes at all which is so great it handled it so well and really delicately but there is a lot of discussion around that so again if you're sensitive to sexual assault I wouldn't maybe read this but the reason I chose these two books one is because they handle very difficult topics and I think they do them both very well there are quite a lot of graphic examples of abuse in this book so it did it definitely was less gentle this book but I really liked the focus on sibling bonds Sadie loves her sister so 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 much she would do anything for her sister and the loss and grief she feels over her sister and the fact that she needs to find justice for her sister because she loves her so deeply was so moving and again with Adam and Julian although they're not technically siblings they do have a sibling type bond and they love each other so much and they just want the best for each other and Adam seeing Julian go through what he went through was so heartbreaking and I think they just have such great bonds and show the effect of those bonds so well and also I do think they handle the topics well again this one is more graphic so yeah but I think they're both brilliant moving books and if you liked one I'm pretty sure you'd like the other one because they definitely have similar themes and a similar sort of vibe and writing style to each other and I would highly recommend them both. <laughs> the next two books I have to talk about are if you liked the new hyped book currently House of Salt and Sorrow by oh god what's her name who wrote it who wrote it Erin Craig is that her name if you liked House of Salt and Sorrows by Erin A. Craig, then I think you will like Saw Kill Girls by Claire Legrand. Both of these books are great. Basically, House of Salt and Sorrows is, I think, is a retelling of like the 12 dancing princesses. Is that what it's called? But basically, it follows our main character as she is grieving for her three sisters that have died. She has 12 sisters. I think three of them have died as well as her mother and basically everyone on their magical island is starting to believe that maybe her family is cursed and people keep dying in her family so it follows our main character she is having to deal with the grief of the losses but she is also starting to be haunted by these losses and some crazy stuff starts going down it's a very dark and atmospheric book it is kind of scary I thought it was a little bit scary so it is a fantasy but I would say it's quite a dark fantasy and Saw Kill Girls follows three female characters Marion, Val and Zoe and Marion is new to this island called Saw Kill Rocks I think and it's quite a small island and basically when she's there she finds out that every few years a girl goes missing and they have no idea why, where, how and it's starting to happen more frequently and so Marion and Zoe and kind of Val start to investigate why this is happening and how this is happening and they get sucked into a dark creepy world and yeah I would say this is also dark fantasy it's pretty creepy there's like this demon thing it's hard to explain but they're both very atmospheric very creepy and they're both really great books they're so good I love the characters in each book I love the characters in Saw Kill Girls more I did prefer Saw Kill Girls 
but because I know so many people are reading House of Salt and Sorrow and if you want something kind of similar then I would highly recommend reading Soul Hill Girls which does not get enough hype and is absolutely amazing and I think they are very similar in terms of atmosphere and vibe and kind of creepiness and yeah they're both amazing and I would highly recommend them if you haven't read them. I don't think I describe them that well but they're kind of hard to explain so I would say just go in and read them. And my final recommendation is a bit of a loose one but I think it still stands and that is if you like Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nagan then I think you will like We Set the Dark on Fire by I can never say her name so this author and this is definitely the darker version like this is very dark and more fantastical but I think the themes are very similar and you may find the other one entertaining if you liked one of them so Girls of Paper and Fire follows our main character Lei and in this world there is a demon king who rules over like the whole land and there are three caste systems paper caste steel caste and moon caste moon caste are full demons steel caste are half demon half human and paper caste are just human and paper caste are the lowest they're sort of seen as just like the scum of the earth <laughs> because the steel and the moon caste are just so much more powerful than they are and every year the Demon King chooses eight paper girls to be basically his concubines, they have to sleep with him, there is sexual assault, etc. And this year the king chooses a ninth girl who is Lei, and this sort of follows her being in the palace with the eight other girls and finding ways to fight back in any way she can while she's being subjected to so much horror from the king and we also see the start of a form of rebellion and yeah it's fantastic one of my favorite books of the year there is also a wonderful female female romance in this book which leads me on to we set the dark on fire this follows our main character and in this world basically women are trained to become useful in men's households so there are two different roles one that is more for discussing business and running the household and being like a sounding board for the men and basically making sure their whole house runs smoothly and the other role is the role of more of a traditional wife but it is a very strict role and they have to be more of a stay at home traditional wife it, basically men rule the world and this follows our two characters as they enter the same household one as the primera and one as the other thing I can't remember the words for these but basically our two girls are now in this household together one filling each role and they start to develop a relationship it's a great female female romance again they're so good it's so good it's like hate to love I'd say it's more dislike to love but still the angst is there it's great and again we sort of follow them as an uprising starts to occur because they're not happy with the world so yeah this has a massive massive trigger warning for sexual assault and rape and I don't think we set the dark on fire has any trigger warnings I'll double check and if they do I'll leave it down below but obviously this book is much darker but they do follow very similar themes of women finding ways to empower themselves even when they're in a very difficult situation women falling in love with women which is what we're all here for and also rebellion it's great and you know women finding their own strength and their own power and they're both fantastic books and I would highly, I would highly, highly recommend them both. I do prefer Girls of Paper and Fire. It's one of my favourite books of the year, but I did thoroughly enjoy We Set the Dark on Fire. And both of these books have a second book coming out soon, so that's exciting. And yeah, if you're a fan of feminism in general and like books that maybe don't take place in the real world and you're a fan of a rebellion, check these out. They're great. 
So yes, that is the end of this video. I hope you have found some recommendations in here that you would like to check out. Obviously, I think they're all good recommendations, otherwise I wouldn't recommend them to you. But if you like any of these books and are looking for something more that's similar to these, then I really hope you have found a new favourite book, because that's what I'm here for. Um, but yes, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. I would love it if you could subscribe and stick around, that would be fantastic. And I'll also leave my Twitter and my Goodreads in the description box if you want to follow along with me there. I would love to see you around. So yeah, thank you again for watching and I will see you next time. Bye!